Hi, my name is Tejvir Dillon, and in this video, I'll be demonstrating a procedure I call purely ultrasound guided tracheostomy. If you're already doing bronchoscopic guided percutaneous tracheostomies, you should check out my prior video called Ultrasound Guided Tracheostomy, in which I show you how to add the ultrasound into your bronchoscopic approach to make the procedure safer and faster. Once you're comfortable with that approach, you can transition to the approach that I'm going to show in this video, which is ultrasound guided tracheostomy without a bronchoscope. Now the addition of ultrasound to tr percutaneous tracheostomy has several benefits. First, the ultrasound allows visual visualization of the anatomy, which you cannot often palpate in our patient population. Um, the ultrasound shows you the cricoid as well as the tracheal rings very clearly. You can also see any vessels that are in the subcutaneous tissues which can decrease your risk of bleeding. This can be especially helpful in patients on dialysis with AV fistulas in their upper extremities who often have pulsatile vessels in the subcutaneous tissues of the neck. The addition of ultrasound also decreases the risk of hypoxia during the procedure since it makes the procedure faster and also limits or, uh, limits or eliminates the use of the bronchoscope. The bronchoscope uh, occupies part of the lumen of the endotracheal tube and decreases your ventilation during the procedure. So limiting that will also decrease your chance of hypoxia. The risk of premature extubation is also essentially zero with this approach since we are not moving the endotracheal tube until after the 14 French dilator is already in place. And ultrasound use also can be applied to an emergency surgical airway situation. So once you're comfortable with this approach, you can use the exact same approach if you're ever called to a emergency surgical airway situation, turn that, turning that procedure from one that you rarely do into one that is very similar to something you're comfortable with. And finally, the ultrasound guided approach decreases your use of resources, including the bronchoscope and the need for a second physician to run the bronchoscope. And both of these resources can be limited in times such as a COVID pandemic. So let's get into the video. Okay, so this is how I set up my uh, my tray every time I do the tracheostomy with the ultrasound. I just put everything in the same order that I'm going to use it in. So first is the local scalpel, the large bore needle with a little bit of saline, your wire, 14 French dilator, the tapered 38 French dilator. I have my tracheostomy tube loaded on the loading dilator and I actually put the gauze on there ahead of time. You got your inner cannula, syringe with air in it to inflate the balloon, and sutures. So if you set it up like that every time, it'll, it'll not only save you time, but prevent you from making an error. So I start by just looking in a transverse orientation. And I will first just look for any blood vessels that are in the way of the trachea. Trachea is pretty easy to see here. It's a round dark structure. You can see the tracheal rings are going to be black and there's a, something called a reverberation artifact where there's an interface between the trachea and the air. So I'm just going to scroll up slowly. I don't see any blood vessels here. Now I'm up by her, by her thyroid cartilage. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do to find my position to find about the second tracheal ring is to go in the longitudinal direction here. So here you'll see the black oval structure towards the right of the screen. That's your cricoid. That's essentially your landmark for this procedure. It's the easiest thing to see. And then just to the left of that you will see three smaller oval oval structures. Those are the tracheal rings, they're black. And they have a bright white line under that's that that's that air uh, and trachea interface. So now that you know where you want to go, like I said around just below the second tracheal ring, I'm gonna go ahead and start by getting my local I'll find that anatomy again right there. I'm going to put my needle right under the transducer 
so I can get an idea of where that second tracheal ring is. So at the end of the screen here, right about here. The second tracheal ring, so my needle is right over that. So what I'm going to do is just numb out my skin right above the second tracheal ring. And that's where I'm going to make my skin incision. I'm going to come down essentially straight down with my large needle under ultrasound guidance. I'm going to make the skin incision. Okay. All right, so now we've made our skin incision. We're going to look at our neck in a transverse fashion and have our large bore needle ready. We're going to advance this under ultrasound guidance here. Let's just see where we are. You can see straight down, you can see a tracheal ring and the trachea right there. And I'm going to start poking, I'm going to have the respiratory therapist put down the cup. So we don't pop it. Okay. Now, you can see my needle start to come in there. I'm going to make sure it's right in the center of the trachea. There it goes, right about there. I'm pushing right on it. See if you can aspirate any air back. Now we're in, as evidenced by the air. I'm gonna stick my wire in here. There's always a little bit of resistance when the wire hits the ET tube, but there shouldn't be a lot of resistance. The wire's in pretty far. So now, just like with the central line, you can look at the wire and see where it's going in with the ultrasound. You can see the wire going down right into the anterior trigger wall. It's just a little bit to the side of midline, but it's going straight into there. And there's no blood vessels that you see right around it, so it should be okay to dilate. So at this point, if you needed to pause, you could actually put up the ET tube cuff and oxygenate the patient more. She's 100%, so we're going to just proceed with the 14 French dilator. There's enough room in the trachea to put this in while the ET tube is in place. We haven't moved the ET tube at all. Now, the respiratory therapist is going to get a bougie. It's already marked at the 34 centimeter mark because the patient's endotracheal tube is 24 centimeters at the teeth. I always mark it 10 centimeters beyond where the endotracheal tube is at the teeth. Now, that mark is going to stay at the patient's teeth. And we're basically just going to park it there to keep our airway in place in case there's an issue with the tracheostomy down here. Let's put the black mark down to her teeth. Okay, it's going to stay right there. Perfect. So now I'm going to get my dilator, the 38 French taper one. Now, this is too large to fit in there with the ET tube in place. So I'm just going to put the tip in. And at this point, we can go ahead and back the ET tube out without moving the bougie out. We're going to back the ET tube about 10 centimeters, so to about 14 centimeters on her. That's, that's pretty good there. Okay, now I'm going to dilate and it goes in real easy. I'm dilated well. I'm going to go ahead and put the loading dilator with the tracheostomy tube in place. So that went in real easy. I'm going to go ahead and take our loading dilator out. And at this point, we're not going to touch the ET tube or the bougie. We're going to inflate our balloon and go ahead and connect the 
ventilator here right on the tracheostomy. Let's make sure we got good end tidal and good tidal volumes. I'll hold it in place. Let's look at our vent over there. Okay. We have good end tidal and good tidal volumes. End tidal is 15. Okay, that's good. 33. Tidal volumes are. Right where they should be. There's probably a little leak while the bougie's in place. There will always be a little leak. So everything looks good now. We will put the balloon down and take the bougie out. And the endotracheal tube all the way out at this point. And that now 34. Okay. Everything is out. We're going to go ahead and inflate the tracheostomy cup. And then we're going to secure with sutures and the tracheostomy straps. I'm gonna hold this down while I suture. It's I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Please share it with anyone that you think might benefit. And thank you for watching. Have fun and save a life.